What's up sellers, welcome to today's video. Hey, today we're gonna be dropping packages off at UPS. Uh, I have some UPS packages that need to go out as well as USPS and U UPS handles USPS drop off. So I'm gonna do that. We have an awesome stack of boxes that need to go out. I actually dropped these whenever I was coming out here. So all of yesterday's sales here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 packages going out. Uh, we have 14 packages going out. And then to mix things up a little bit today, I'm gonna take my fishing gear out and just do a little bit of fishing. Um, I wanna keep things fresh and up to date here on the, the channel. And you know, back in 2014, 2015, when I had my last day job, I always told myself that once I became self-employed, I would fish every day. I love fishing. I think that's part of why I love reselling because it's like fishing. Um, you are trying to sell a product to a consumer or a customer. That's what fishing is. You're basically selling the fish on the idea of your lure or your bait. You're trying to bait them in and bring them uh, to get them, right? To get them on the hook, just like you would with customers. So I love fishing. Uh, I'm gonna take you fishing with me today. We're gonna use a GoPro. Uh, I'm gonna cut to only the most exciting things with fishing. Uh, so there will be no boring part of this video. This right here is probably the most boring part of this video. Uh, it's gonna be exciting. We're gonna catch some fish. It's overcast today. It's cool. Uh, we are going we're going to catch fish uh, and then release them. So I only do catch and release with the exception of like extended camping trips. If I do like a multiple night camping trip, then I will generally uh, eat what I catch. However, today is just catch and release. Gonna have some fun with the fishes and take you guys along. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Here is the saga for the whole um, buying a steamer to steam my eBay merchandise to get the wrinkles out, all of that. You remember back to when I bought that steamer and it was horrible. Like the uh, spraying water everywhere is dangerous. All right, so as I'm getting steamed in the face and staring down the barrel of this boiling water, let's hope I don't die. I just got a return package in the mail, return to sender. And I was thinking that's weird because all of my packages went out and they all made it to their destinations and I haven't had any issues. And then I open it and what do you know, this thing is back to haunt me. So, uh, not sure what the deal is with that. Not sure why I got it back. I've already been refunded by the seller. I, I did the return label, shipped it off, and refunded. And so now I don't know why I have this thing. Uh, I'm going to reach out to the seller, see if they want it back. And I don't know. It's a piece of junk, but I might try to fiddle around with it. Part of my MO, I guess, is trying to fix things or trying to make things better when they are not better. So I might actually try to mess around with it. I was thinking that if I could put some sort of cloth or some sort of, um, not cloth, but I guess maybe like a, some sort of barrier in there to where the boiling water couldn't pass through it, but the steam could, maybe it would like catch the boiling water. Might try that, um, but I don't want to build up so much pressure that it like blows up or something. So I don't know. That's the, that's the saga. It's funny because I was going to go to Target yesterday and buy one, buy a steamer, and I didn't. And so now this thing is back in my life and we'll see if we can get it fixed or working or something. All right, so here we are. We are at the fishing spot. You can see it right here. This is actually um, up there is a lake, huge lake. I say huge. It's a couple hundred acres, uh, a decent size. If you have like a little John boat or um, a kayak or a canoe or something like that, I often take my canoe out there. Then you have this runoff and then you have this sort of channel of runoff water. And then it goes back into the woods where it eventually creates like a swamp slash creek that goes up behind my house. I'm about a mile from my house, and so all of this water is interconnected. Um, it is about a half mile walk from the parking area through the grass down here. So um, I've never had better success with fishing than I have at this spot. I have never come here and not caught something. So really excited. The water is flowing, which is a good sign because when it's flowing, the fish, uh, they generally wait at the bottom for things to eat. So it's just cast in that water, which is just a couple feet deep and catch stuff or cast out there, which is about four to eight feet deep and catch bigger stuff. So we're gonna try to catch uh, both stuff and bigger stuff today. Super excited about this. I'm gonna get the GoPro put on and uh, get to fishing. All right, so what we're doing here today is um, I fish with an ultra light or a super light set, uh, really lightweight line anywhere from two to six pound test. Today I'm fishing four pound test on both of my rods. For this, this is kind of a sit and wait option using a little bit of uh, chartreuse or neon green crappie nibbles. 
crappie bait and let's see how many casts it takes to get a fish. I'm going to say within the first five. Had it pretty close to that runoff there to where the concrete runs out into this water. Going to move it a bit out. Fish might be hanging out a little bit further. I don't know. I'm not a great fisherman. I'm good enough to where if my life depended on it, I wouldn't die. Our bobber's right there. I am not a patient fisherman, that is for sure. I like to move things quickly. I like to lure fish more than I like to sit and wait. My grandfather was a great sit and wait fisherman. I am not. Oh, I'm in a tree. You've got to be kidding me. Come on. And I'm out of the tree. I guess I'm good enough to get out of the tree. Let's make sure we still have some bait on there. And I was really up in there. Jeez. All right, cool. We still have our bait on. I might not be floating. It might not be sinking this low enough in the water. And try to get it back over to that wall without getting caught up again. Ooh, perfect. Right where we want to be. So this is cast number three. Let's see if we get anything here. Third time's a charm, I think. So what I do is I... Oh, there we go. Oh, he got it. No. Something pulled it under and then... He got off. He didn't commit to the bite. So like I said, the fish that I'm fishing are really, really tiny. So like these are small fish. That's why I like the super lightweight rig because it gives, it gives the illusion of a really good fight, right? The, uh, the little fish pull on it and even because it's super lightweight, it feels more intense than it really is. If a big fish ever did get on this gear, um, which has happened a couple times in the past. I was fishing six pound tests and I kept catching these three and four pound bass. And they, uh, one time, it was actually the end of the fishing day because of this, uh, a monster got on there and broke the line immediately. I didn't even have a chance. So I'm going to extend the length of this so that it can, this bait can go a little bit deeper. I'm not sure where the fish are hanging out right now. Let's go way out. It's not really way out, but oh well. Kind of a sucky place to put it, right in the middle of the water. These fish, oh, got one, got one. Cast number four. Oh, we got one. We've got one. Come on now. Let me turn this so you can see it. So remember, like I said, these are small fish, but the fight is intense because the line is so, there it is. Look at that. Look at that little guy. Little bluegill. Um, yeah, pretty excited about that. Nice little first fish of the day. Let's, uh, let's get them off and get them back in the water. Cool, so we're, we're not skunked, that's for sure. They've got these, spine, these spines on them that kind of make it a hassle sometimes. Nice little fish, little guy, four inches or so, maybe five. Whoop. Later. All right, and we still got our bait on there. That's pretty, pretty nice. And actually, that's cool because that was in the spot where I thought it was not gonna be, uh, not gonna be a good idea to fish, right in the middle of that water. Let's go again, cast number five. Oh, something hit it and then quit it. Come on. I think it may have actually got my bait. Nope, it's good. Got one. Nice. Nice. Oh, this feels a little bit tougher. Oh, no, he got off. Come on, guys. No. You've got to be freaking kidding me. Did he take my whole hook? No, he just took the bait. Crap. We're going down there. We're going down to that spot. They're hitting down there. Buddy, they are hitting down there. We are doing it. Oh man, I'm pumped right now. I'm freaking pumped. I can't tell you. All right, so I'm fishing near the actual runoff here and I wanna move down there. There's like a little path that goes over that way and it seems like the fish are hanging out in that deeper water. We're getting there. Let's get this rod, let's get my Starbucks because you know, can't do country life style without some Starbucks in your life. I, that's not true, you can get the big camera and hopefully not drop it. What you guys didn't see is when I first arrived here, I was walking down this little path and fell on my butt and almost broke my camera. Oh, look at that, a laptop. You see that laptop on the ground? Huh, interesting. All right, guys, so this is cast number six. Number six. Put it right there. Uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of content with the fishing. Uh, this is my first time doing this and yeah, curious to know if you guys are interested in it. This would not be an all the time thing because honestly, I get, I feel pretty, uh, 
guilty generally when I go fishing during working hours, but I'm trying to, to get some new stuff at the YouTube channel for some content. I'm going to put my polarized glasses on because polarized glasses help you see underneath the glare of the water. And it's so dark I can't see anything anyways, so I guess that didn't really matter. I'm thinking that I might try a bit of, uh, I might try this guy right here. This is a beetle spinner or beetle jig or whatever you want to call it. Just a tiny little guy that floats through the water for small fish. And it's mostly impervious to branches. Uh, you can hit a branch and it'll just pop right over the branch. It has a little spinner on it to attract the fish, to get their attention. Tie it off right where that eyelet is. This thing spins in the water. Fish come up from below, grab this guy, hook their upper lip. So what I'm going to do is instead of hitting that spot again, I'm going to go in like a clock pattern, right? So right now maybe hit like 10 o'clock. Nope, that was 9 o'clock. Oh, something took off with it. Oh, something grabbed it and ran with it. I was not expecting that. Oh, oh, it came at it again. It's a bass. There's a bass that's after this. Oh, holy cow. That was a good-sized fish. He, he came after it twice. I'm going to go again. I'm on the ready now. Man, that was a big fish that just, I mean, I say big, but probably, you know, eight inches or so. Nothing extremely awesome, but he's out here. He's feeling what I'm putting out now. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Patience. 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 What do we have? What do we have? Oh, buddy. Holy moly. No. Oh, whoa. It was two fish. There was another fish bit onto this. No freaking way. Holy cow, I hooked this and another fish had swallowed this one. That's why I couldn't get it in. What in the world? You can see how stunning. Look, 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 look. What just happened? Oh my gosh, he's bleeding from his tail. Something bit him. Do you see that? Holy cow, I, caught, I had a fish on a fish. Wow. I've never had that happen before. I don't have like an extensive fishing history. I've never had that happen before. That is crazy. Oh, poor guy. He's shocked. He got hooked and hooked. Dang, something bit right through his tail. I bet you anything. It was one of those, um, I got blood all over my hands now. Let's go. Let's go. Man, that was fun. Dude, that was a fun run. Let's, let's move our, let's move through the clock. I guess we could try one of these guys that I've had good success with these rooster tail. I just cut off the rooster part, the uh, or the tail rather, because I don't I feel like the fish do better biting it without the fuzzy on it. All right, so this is a lot more risky fishing because it's got a treble hook, and that treble hook can catch on anything plant or fish or anything else that's in the water, sticks, branches, super risky. But the way that this little thing shimmers and spins, man, it gets their attention. I'm telling you what. Thing is, you just have to start retreating it at the second it hits the water. Something already hit it once. It's probably too small to fit that big treble hook in its mouth. But the good thing about this is this particular rooster tail has some weight on it, so I can sling it pretty far using this super lightweight four pound test. Oh, oh, whoa, he hit hard. Wow, he really hit hard. Oh, jeez, calm down. There we go. He hit like literally and just ran with it. I was almost all the way reeled in by the time he, uh, another little guy. No cut in the tail, so we know he's a new fish. Later, dude. All right, so they're hitting this, that's good. And he wasn't a huge fish, so we know that with this treble hook, um, you know, the smaller fish are also getting a piece of the pie. I think that's three fish so far.
Ooh, got something. Got, got a little guy. Got a little guy. I think I might have foul hooked him. Nope, I got him right. There we go. Number four. Oh man, he got two of the two of the three hooks. It's doable, it's fixable. The worst is whenever they get all three hooks in their mouth. I might need my pliers for this. Just so I don't cut myself. Nope, I got it. There he is. Hey guy. See you later. I think that's four. It's exciting. Let's go for another four more. Just kidding. I don't know. At least we know that they're hitting this lure. I've never caught a bass in this part of the shallow water. Another one. Wow. Back to back. This is a smaller guy. He is definitely fighting, though. You're not a smart one, are you? Oh, man. He got two of them also. Come on, dude. Did he? Let's see. Open your mouth. Small dude, lighter. Gotta change my, gotta change my pants when I get home. Keep wiping all these fish guts and smell on them. Hey guys, I want to say thank you for joining me today on this little excursion. If you did like this video and this kind of content uh, for once in a while, you know, an occasional thing, then be sure to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and to let me know that you liked it. And then, uh, as always, keep selling, get the bag, and I'll see you on the next video.